Hey, you, I need you to hit that subscribe button. Subscribe. Tell me your name again, brother. Jamel, Asani. Asani. Jamel and Asani. All right, I'm Kayo. All right, uh, read verse four again. Is that where you started? Verse four? Yes, sir. Verse four. Matthews, chapter 24, verse four. And Jesus answered and said unto them, take heed that no man deceive you. All right, so as the officer was bringing out, right, the Bible is our history book, all right? right? The Bible is where we get our understanding of how we should walk and live in this world today. All right. If you're not listening to the Bible and the Bible isn't instructing you on how to conduct yourself as a young man, as a young woman here on this earth, then what's going to instruct you? Uh, that's a question. I, I really want to know what the answer is. Well, you're going you're gonna to learn from somewhere. You know what I mean? If, it's not, if you're not learning from this Bible, then who, who are you learning from? Parents, right? That's a good instructor right there. So our parents, that's one teacher, that's one guy that we have in life. Who else are we learning from today? You said uh, at school, so you got teachers at school, and you also have what at school? You got a guidance counselor, what else? Principals. I'm, 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 Y'all missing the key, the key people, though, that influence us the most. So who are those people around us in our lives that have such an impact on what we decide to do day to day? Us? Who is us? Like your who? Your who? Your peers. That's a good one. All right. So our peers influence us. They determine what things we do, uh, how we do it, what we're not going to do, right? Where we spend our money, what we're going to do Friday night, where we're going to go this weekend. You understand? All of those types of things, usually we counsel with who? Our peers, right? But the instruction should be the Bible, all right? And that's a deception. Read that again. And Jesus said, excuse me, and Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. Right, so the scriptures say, Take heed that no man deceive you. How have we been deceived today? We've been deceived today by thinking that this that this white man right here is Jesus the Christ. And that, that he can save us, you understand, from the oppression and all of the problems that we have in our community today, right? Because we got single parent uh, households. We're growing up with broken families, right? The prison system consists of who? Black and brown people. It's the whole prison system, probably about 80% of it. Right. You understand? It's, it's us today. So that's a deception. When we listen to our friends, we listen to our peers, we rejected the Bible. We pushed the Bible away, right? Because this man allowed it right here. You understand? That's a deception, and it's destroyed us today. So. It started here in slavery. You understand? It started with us rejecting God. That's what the officer was bringing out earlier today. So we reject God commandments. You understand? He punished us by slavery, allowing that to happen to us. He punished us by allowing us to, 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 to not have any fathers in our homes to teach us God's laws. That's a punishment. You understand? If you grew up, sister right here, what's your name? Penny. Penny. All right. Did you grow up with a father in your life? All praises. Did your did most of your friends have fathers as well? Some of them. You understand? But you, if you go to another community, you understand. Most of those people outside of ours will grow up with good instruction. You understand? In their homes. But we don't have that today, right? Why? Because the black men have been destroyed in America under this image right here. It's very important. All right. So one of the deceptions that we have today. That's had a, a, such a great impact on our community is just simply the image of what Jesus Christ looks like, right? It seems simple, right? But our imagination comes from what? An image, right? So if we destroy an image of a people, what's that going to do to the minds of the children? It's, it's going to destroy the minds of the children, and that's what we are today, all right? We're the children that's been destroyed by the images that God gave for us. The images God gave for us have been destroyed and changed, so now our minds have been destroyed and changed, right? So we have to fix that. That's the deception. Many shall come in my name. This was an image that came in the name of Christ, right? right? But it, it ain't got nothing to do with Christ, right? Get Revelation chapter 1. You there? Sis, also want to know uh, why she shouldn't celebrate Christmas. 
Why you should? That's a good question. All right. So let's let's answer that. Let's let's read this first, and then we're gonna answer your question. All right. Revelation chapter one, start at verse fourteen, because this is a description of Jesus Christ. Read. Revelation chapter one, verse fourteen. His head and his hairs were white like wool. All right. So this is a description of Jesus Christ, right? It says his head and his hairs were white like wool, right? Wool is a texture, right? Does this man have a uh, woolly textured hair? Nah, who at, on the earth has woolly textured hair? No question, right? All right, so we can keep reading, come on. As white as snow. Now this image right here, that's woolly textured hair. That's a depiction of it, right? Right, woolly textured hair is how your hair is. I just cut my hair off, right? But if I grew it out, it would look like yours. That's a woolly textured hair, come on. And his eyes were as a flame of fire. Because what happens to your hair? Hold on, what happens to your hair when you get older? Right, look at that brother's hair right there. You see that? That's white like wool, right? I want you to get that image in your mind. So we're reading about Christ and his glorified body. In his glorified body, he had white woolly hair, right? If a if a either if a uh, a so-called white person today grows up and their hair, uh, what color does their ha hair turn when they get older? It turns white as well, right? But is it woolly in texture or is it sh uh, straight and stringy? It's straight, and, no question, right? So we know. That the description in the depiction of Christ, whether he's young or old, is describing a black man. Can we all agree on that? All right, keep reading. Verse 15. Come on. And his feet, like going to fine brass. So it say his feet was like fine brass, right? I can't see any of y'all feet, but I can see your ankles. Your ankles, generally, they the same color as y'all feet, right? It's going to be the same color, right? Right? You got socks on, right? But Christ was black, black, like your socks. You understand? He was, but we're going to get there. But what we're reading right now is a, 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 a description of the depiction of Christ. You understand? Keep reading. As if they burned in a furnace. So his feet was like brass, right? Brass is what color? <laughs> Can't hear you. It's like bronze. It's like bronze or brown color, right? Is it is it the, is this like bronze or uh uh or, or, or uh does this look like a a, bra a brown color or a brass color? No, nah, it don't look like that. It don't look like that. You understand? So we already know that brass is a brown color. So if you take that brass and you do what with it? As if they burned in a furnace. So if you take that brass and then you put brass in a furnace, is that brass going to get lighter and color is going to get darker? It's going to get darker. So what are we reading again? We're reading out of the Bible a depiction, right? It's a description of this depiction that we see right here of Christ, right? And it says that his his hair was white and woolly. It says that his skin, the color of it, was like brass that you that you burned inside of a furnace. So it got very dark. You understand? Very very dark, right? Come on. And his voice as the sound of many waters. Right. And his voice, he spoke, he spoke with authority. You understand? He wasn't a, a weak man. He wasn't soft. So to stay right here, we're going to answer your question. We're going to answer it. Get Jeremiah for it because I see she's trying, she trying to run off. The first thing we got to do is understand who Jesus Christ is, what he looks like. Why is that important to us today? Why, why, is that, why does that even matter? Right? Right. I'm going to tell you why it matters cause, because who has children out here? Raise your hand. All right. When they watch cartoons and stuff like that, does that impact them? Does that influence them? Yes or no? Does it encourage them? Right? Does it does it change their spirit at all? It does, doesn't it? It does. It does. So, how much of a difference would it make if your children had superheroes that look like them? Wouldn't that put hope and still things in them? You understand? Wouldn't that teach them to to that 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 their uh their brother or their cousin, you understand, that their family could be something great too? Because they're seeing an image of something that looks like them and it's something great. You understand? So you have to understand that the, 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 the greatest person to ever walk the face of the earth, our children need to know that they look just like him, that they come from his lineage, right? If they if they don't believe that there's a connection there, then it doesn't matter. Right. We we separate ourselves from that. We, we uh, disassociate ourselves from the Bible. Now, the Bible, it, it, we, we, we don't care to read it because it ain't got nothing to do with us. We don't identify with it. You understand what I'm saying? So that's why it's very important that we understand the image of Christ. Get Jeremiah chapter 10. You got what I want? All right. And the question was, why shouldn't we celebrate Christmas? Right. We shouldn't celebrate Christmas because the Bible says don't celebrate Christmas. Right? We shouldn't celebrate birthdays because the Bible say, right, 
Don't celebrate birthdays. You don't find birthdays in the Bible being celebrated by God's people. All right? Thanksgiving. You understand? That's an abomination to the Lord. All right? Valentine's Day. You don't find that in the Bible. Your oppressors, the people that brought you over here on slave ships. All right? That's their custom. They, they, they celebrate those, uh, th those feasts. Right? They have those types of celebra celebrations for their loved ones. Right? God gave us in his Bible all the celebrations that we should celebrate, and Christmas isn't one of them. Right. All right? Read what you got. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 10 and verse 2. Come on. Thus saith the Lord, learn not the way of the heathen. Of the who? Of the heathen. Of the who? Of the heathen. All right. So who do you see on this sign right here? These are the Israelites. All right? So your so-called... Uh, uh, African Americans today, your so-called Puerto Ricans today, your so-called Cubans, Dominicans, uh, Native Americans, Seminole Indians, uh, Panamanian, in Aztecs, Mayans, all these by words, all right? All those, all those, uh, uh, the, the, the so-called so niggas today, the so-called spicks today, you understand? These are actually the Israelites according to the Bible. That's right. Why? Because the prophecy will show us step by step, commandment by commandment, instruction by instruction, that everything you see on these signs was prophesied to happen to the Israelites. And everything you see on these signs happened to these people on this sign right here. Right. So the Bible tells us to learn not the way of who? Come on. Learn not the way of the heathen. Of the heathen. These people are heathens. All right. So their custom wasn't to do what we're reading right now. The custom of the heathens was what we're getting ready to read right now. So this was one of the customs of the heathens today. Who are your heathens today, all right? Your heathens today would be uh, uh, your, 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 your Chinese people, according to so-called Chinese people. That's a heathen, according to the Bible. Your so-called white person today. That's a heathen, according to the Bible, all right? Say it again. Your so-called East Indian. That's a heathen, according to the Bible, all right? The real Egyptians, heathens, according to the Bible, all right? The real Africans, I'm not talking about African Americans, those are so-called, all right? So the real, the real Africans, right? The real Africans are Ethiopians, you understand what I'm saying? Uh, it's a sub-Saharan uh, uh, sign over here. Uh, can somebody get that sign? It's a, all right, so these are your real Arabians, you understand? Your real, your, your real uh, 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 Muslims, you understand? They come from Arabia, from from Arab. They're Arab. You understand what I'm saying? Those are your, your real Muslims. Those are heathens, according to the Bible. I'm not talking about the black people walking around saying they're Muslims. I'm not talking about the, the nation of Islam. I'm not talking about NOI. I'm not talking about your Moors. You understand? Those are so-called African-Americans today who God calls an Israelite from the tribe of Judah. That's who they are biblically, right? But what have they done? They've learned the ways of the heathen, all right? One of those customs of the heathen is, read that again. Learn not the way of the heathen, and be not dismayed at the signs of heaven. So don't be dismayed, right? Don't be uh, 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 puzzled by the signs of heaven. What's the signs of heaven? The heavens is, is the skies. What's the different signs we have in the skies? The clouds, what else? What types of things do, 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 we, do, we, uh, do we worship, do we uh, ponder upon? Right, that that got us just gazing up in the in the in the in the, in the sky all day, right? What else? The stars and what else? Clouds. What else? What about at nighttime? What you see? And what and what else? And and what else? The moon, the sun. What else is up there? The stars. What about the planets and all of those types of things? Yeah, well, you say of course, but we skipped over it, so we we just gotta back up a little bit. That's all. All right. So you you say of course, but everybody might not know it so clear. All right. So the Bible tells us to to don't let don't let these horoscopes. Y'all ever heard of that? Where did they come from? Horoscopes. What are, what are the the horoscopes and the signs that we have? Whether you're a Sagittarius or in a uh, what's the other ones? The Pisces and Aquariuses, right? All, all, Aries, all that type of stuff. She must be an Aries. All, all that stuff. All that stuff, right, got to do with what? The signs of heaven. You understand? The Bible say don't do that. All right? Don't let that determine how you should feel today or how you should feel for the rest of your life because you was born during this time of the month. You don't read that in the Bible. But these are customs that we follow. That's a heathenistic principle. That's a heathenistic practice. That's a heathenistic, you understand, belief system, thought process. We shouldn't think like that. We should think how the Bible tells us to think, all right? So read that again from the top. Remember, we're talking about Christmas, all right? And Christmas is a heathen custom. Read. For the heathen 
or dismayed at them right. for the customs of the people are vain. So the Bible says the custom of the other people, not the Israelites, all the other nations, right? Because the God is, the Most High God is only dealing with the people right here, the Israelites, all right? They're scattered in other countries. All the countries aren't listed on this sign. But the people, the Israelites, most of them go by these names today. That's, that's who we know them by today. But they're scattered all throughout the whole earth. You understand what I'm saying? Throughout the whole earth, they're scattered. All right? And God says this, God tells his people, don't learn their customs, all right? They're lies. What's up? What, what? I just answered the question. The scriptures say that they're vain. The customs of the people are vain. Vain means that they're lies, right? They're not true. It's not truth. There's no truth in them. Come on. They don't mean nothing. It's unprofitable. You understand? So this is one of those customs that don't mean nothing. That's unprofitable. Come on. For one, cutteth a tree out of the forest. One does what? Cutteth a tree out of the forest. Hold on. What does one of them customs do? Cut a tree out of the forest. All right, so my sister right here, for Christmas, right, where do you get your tree? Don't say Walmart. Where you get your tree? Not right now with COVID. You get it from Big Lots? All right, but that tree is a fake tree or a... It's a fake tree, all right? But it's a, a, a replication of a real tree that you would get from where? Forest. Read it again. For one cutteth a tree out of the forest. You would normally get that tree from where? Out of a forest. That's where that custom came from, right? We wise to do evil today. So instead of going to cut the tree down like the heathens used to do back in the day, now we just go to Big Lots and buy it from our oppressor, right? They sell it to us. You know, they, they put it on sale and they sell it to us and we buy it to keep their customs and to keep them in rulership, to keep their practices, you know, going. Watch this. I want to show you. I want to show y'all something. How I know we read about something from thousands of years ago. This is during the Babylonian captivity, right? I want to show you that we still, y'all, still doing this today. The same evil practice today. You just don't know it. If you Google an evergreen, the family of evergreens, right? Because today we use the what is it a fir, right? Yes. The fir tree. That's that's what we use as, or y'all use as a Christmas tree, right? It's from the it's from the family of evergreen trees. Read it again, upright as the what? They are upright. They are upright as the palm tree. The palm tree is what we is what they used back in that time, two thousand years ago, right? Guess what? The palm tree is the Mediterranean climate evergreen. That's the evergreen of the Mediterranean. But the point of it being an evergreen is that. It stays uh, fruitful all year round, which symbolizes what right, which symbolizes eternal life, and that eternal life was in worship of Nimrod and his son, living forever. After they died, that's what you're worshiping. It's not Christ. It's not baby Jesus. It's not his birthday. It's not Christianity. It's not the Bible. It's not God. It's Nimrod. You're worshiping a false god in doing that. All the practices, the gifts that you put under it is a sacrifice to Nimrod and his son and his mother, which was his wife, which is what he had his child with. That's what you're worshiping. That's what you're practicing when you take on that uh, uh, the, the ways of the oppressor. What's the name again? Nimrod? Nimrod. Yes, ma'am. Hold on, sister. Not so fast. Uh-uh. Come on back. I got something else I got to share with you. I got something else I got to share with you. Come on back. Read what you got. For one cutteth a tree out of the forest, the work of the hands of the workmen with the axe. Right, because in, in, in before we had Christmas trees at Big Lots, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Before we had uh, uh, trees at Big Lots, right, we had to go to the forest. And how would you cut a tree down? You would use an axe, right? You use an axe. What are we reading right now in the Bible? How many of y'all have ever heard this custom of Christmas in the Bible? Have you heard that before? That's what we're reading about right now. The same practice that most of y'all, right, probably celebrated within the last five years. You understand? In some way, shape, or form. The God says don't do that. God says do not do that. That's a heathenistic practice. That's a heathen custom. I called you to be holy. That's going to make you like a heathen. That's going to make you abominable, distasteful in my sight. I don't want to, I can't deal with you while you practicing that. You filthy. You need to clean yourself up and then come to me and pray to me. Right? That's what God is saying do. Come on, read. They deck it with They do what? They deck it with They do what? They deck it. What's that mean? They decorate it. You understand? This is easy. 
Right? So what are we reading about? Christmas in the Bible. When we get that tree and we put it in our living room, you understand? Right? And uh, today we put it in a tree stand, right? We just read about them hammering it. Back then they used to use hammer and nails to make it stay up. You understand? Now we use a tree stand. It's the same thing. They decked it. What we do today? We decorate it with what? With what? With what? Ornaments? Say it again. Ornaments. Why do we do? Why do we do all this stuff? Why we? Why? Why we? Why we glorify this tree so much? Why we? Why we? Why we bring all these gifts to it? Why we put our gifts under the tree and all of that? You understand? There's a custom of Nimrod. You understand? There's a custom from ancient Babylon, all right? From ancient Babylon, where uh, all the way back during the time of Nimrod, it, with, with Babel, right? When you go back to Genesis, all right? Where you had a, 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 a son who died an untimely death, all right? And it was believed, all right, that his spirit came back through an evergreen tree, all right? And that's where the custom of Christmas comes today. That's why when you have a tree on a tree stand, all right, you have to use an evergreen tree because what's unique about an evergreen tree? It don't die. It don't die. You understand? It stays green during the winter time. Everything else dying, but that tree stay alive. All right? That was significant. That was significant to Nimrod, all right? Uh, or the son of Nimrod, which was Tammuz. All right? That was significant to him. And what do we do? Right? We believe that if we did not bring gifts to this tree, all right, that had the spirit of Tammuz, all right, that that tree would get up from the tree stand and come chase us, all right? So we brought gifts to it to appease the tree. That's why you bring gifts to the tree today, right? You bring gifts to the tree, you put uh, uh, lights on it, and you de you put silver and gold on it. You 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 commit so much of your time, energy, energy, and hard-earned money to this tree. You understand? To what? Do you sing around it? Right? You create songs about it. You know some songs. I, I, you know some songs. I'm sure everybody out here knows some Christmas songs, all right? And it all came from this Christmas tree, you understand, that you're not supposed to be celebrating, all right? That tree cannot come to life. It's not going to eat your babies if you don't get, give it gifts, you understand? You're going to be just fine if you don't put that tree in your in your living room. You're going to be all right, you understand? And your, your kids going to be fine, too, all right? The only reason that they feel like they can't live without it is because they learned it from you. You understand? They learned it from what you exposed them to. All you got to do is change that, all right? It's, it's customs in the Bible for us to follow, to replace that with. You understand? That's for who? The Israelites. It's customs for our people. We used to scream black power while Haram was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission, minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold, from Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof, I-U-I-C, we deliver the truth.